Hi there, my name is Robert Hock and I'm a Sitecore Technology MVP from the Netherlands. In my last video, you've hopefully seen how easy it was to get started with Sitecore 10 headless development with ASP.NET Core and Docker containers. In today's episode, let's find out how the architecture looks like and what was installed when we used the new Sitecore CLI and the new Sitecore.NET Core template to create the solution and infrastructure. Let's first have a look at this Docker Desktop Dashboard. The Docker Desktop Dashboard provides a simple interface that enables you to interact with containers and applications and manage the lifecycle of your applications directly from your machine. The Dashboard UI shows all running, stopped and started containers with their uh, status. So let's have a look at the installed containers for the Kaye application. And this was all installed, remember, when I configured it with the Getting Started template. So if you haven't watched that in my previous video, then I would urge you to first go and watch it before actually watching this video. Here you can see that we have like a container running for each role in the XP1 topology. So as you can see here, we have like a, a traffic uh, container, uh, some like a Cortex uh, processing worker container, XDB automation, XDB search worker containers. Uh, we have an XConnect container, Solar as well. We have a separate container for that. SQL Server, a CM environment, and finally we have the .NET Core rendering host. So you can stop and uh, start actually all of these individual uh, containers. Uh, but you can also completely bring it down uh, on this level. So, uh, and then you can also uh, start it when it's actually uh, down for a given ap application. But let's maybe, uh, maybe a visual overview uh, of this whole setup would be a little bit better in your understanding. Luckily for us, Rob Erlen has already laid this out for us in one of his Sitecore 10 videos on the Master Sitecore YouTube channel. But let's first have a look here at Trafik. Trafik is an open source modern HTTP reverse proxy and load balancer that makes deploying microservices very easy. Traffic integrates with your existing infrastructure components such as Docker and configures itself automatically and dynamically and have its own monitoring dashboard. It automatically load balances containers. You, you actually run it uh, itself in a container, which you point to your Docker service socket and it just detects containers as they start and as they stop. So when the website visitor, as you can see here, actually requests the page of a website, the incoming HTTP request is routed to specific Docker containers without having to worry about the constant IP addresses changes when a container actually restarts, as traffic is able to automatically detect this. So Docker is an efficient way to run web applications in production, and also locally, of course. So if we want to run multiple microservice applications on the same Docker host, we need to set up a reverse proxy, in this case, traffic. Since you only want to expose ports 80 and ports uh, 443 to the rest of the world, that's the reason why we need traffic in our architecture. As mentioned before, traffic comes with a nice monitoring dashboard. Let's see in the Docker dashboard on what port it runs. So let's open this up, scroll all the way to the uh, traffic uh, container. Let's inspect that it runs on port localhost uh, 8079. So uh, the dashboard is a central place that shows you the current active routes uh, that are handled by traffic. Well, that's all about what I have to say on the, so have a look here at the HTTP. This is basically all I know, uh, what I have to say on traffic. I'm not an expert in this, uh, but it just uh, so you know, it's needed in the architecture. The getting started template will help you exactly with setting it up and configuring it. Let's go back now to the architecture diagram. Now that we talked about traffic, let's have a look at the architecture diagram once more. There's the obvious cycle roles, such as identity server, XConnect, content management. 
Um, but there's one more interesting uh, uh, one that we want to discuss because, uh, and that's the ASP.NET Core rendering host. Since this video is about Cycro 10 headless development with ASP.NET Core, I want to deep dive a little bit further into this. So let's explore the inner workings of this rendering host a little bit further and how it fetches the content from a Sidecore instance. So as I mentioned before in my previous video, the rendering host and the Sidecore instance are decoupled. The rendering host serves as the front end of your uh, website, where the Sidecore instance serves as the back end of your website. Sidecore headless development functions in the following way. The visitor sends a request to the web server which activates this rendering host web app. The rendering host translates the request to a content item in the Sitecore instance. The layout service client fetches the relevant content and presentation data, the data model, from the headless services, uh, which internally uses the layout service for that. The Sitecore layout service is uh, a Sitecore headless services endpoint which provides JSON formatted Sitecore content. The layout service client, which you use to communicate with this layout service, passes the data model to the rendering engine. The Sitecore rendering engine then renders that data model and your code and your static uh, resources into the final response back to the visitor. And that's what I wanted to show you today uh, in this video. Make sure to check out the Sitecore Headless Services documentation at doc.sitecore.com. In the next video, we're going to further explore Sitecore 10 Headless Development with ASP.NET Core. Thanks for watching and see you next time.